and uh, with that. Guys are rolling. Hey, Fred. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This good. is Council Bill Solms. Uh, with the Ledger Town Council Finance Committee. With me are Councilors Andra Ingalls and Tom Malone, also members of the Finance Committee. Uh, and in the room and online, we also have Roxanne Marr, Mary McGratton, Nancy Gillis, Marsha Hancock, Linda Davis, Patty Riley, Hillary Evans. Uh, I think I see Beth Rumery online. Uh, I think I saw Hazel Gorman walk in the room. Maybe Claudia Sweeney. Uh, and I Pardon me? It's not Claudia. It's Marsha Dykes. Oh, Marsha Dyke. Hi, Marsha. I heard you were coming. Hi, how are you? Welcome. Um, and also Mayor Allen. Did I miss anyone? No, sir. Uh, Ian, maybe? All right. Oh, yeah. I think he said my name. I did sorry, not. Sorry. Ian Samuel. Thank you. Unforgettable. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> no, you're not, buddy. <laughs> Okay, so um, a little bit uh, just about housekeeping. Um, I am remote, as you know, and when uh, additional people come in just for the minutes, we need to know who they are. Um, if I disappear uh, from online, I'll ask Tom and Andra to carry on the discussion until I get back. Um, and that will only be because my internet knocked off, knocked me off, I'm planning to stay here. I think I forgot, did I mention Linda Davis? You did? Yeah. Okay. She's here, and I see Mike Cherry uh, just joining. Uh, so anyway, if I get knocked off, just carry on, and uh, we'll. I'll be back. Um, first up, we have um, the town clerk, Patty Riley. So, uh, Patty, if you're ready, I think we yeah. are now. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Well, welcome, and thank you for coming. Um. So. My budget has, um, I, I tried to keep it about the same as last year. Um, you see an increase on the operating expenses of $600, and that is um, solely because um, Marsha and Finance has asked to switch over the line item of shredded. Um, since I handle that anyways, it just made sense to put it in my budget and not in her. So you'll see that addition there um, for that reason. Um, however, I did decrease in my training um, line, you know, due to COVID, you know, there's a lot less meetings going on. There's more online. Uh, and we might see a pickup this year, uh, at least for online stuff, uh, as I don't think they're going to go back to person quite yet. So there was a decrease there, but I, I tried to you know, keep my, my budget pretty trim, so. Very no, good, look, it, it looks trim. Thank you. Okay. Um, so counselors, I did not have any questions for the town clerk. Um, she just answered one of them um, regarding operating expenses. The only other one I had was the uh, year to date is, is zero. And I was multitasking, so if you just updated us on what it is currently. Patty, I just missed that, so. On, on what? I'm sorry, I missed what the, on. <laughs> yeah, so in the, in the budget, as of 1231, oh, operating expenses are at zero. So I'm I'm sure they're not, but that's what the budget oh, is. Oh, no, about. oh, yeah, no. Um, it's actually, uh, it's, it's closer to, I believe, 24. Uh, so it's actually almost all occupied. Um, the uh, land record um, contract is, is a twice, it, it gets paid twice a year, and I paid the second half uh, of that already, so that was, that's the majority of it. Uh, I did just uh, put in for the microfilm, so you wouldn't see that one yet, but that actually just yep. was sent out uh, microfilm, uh, and I just uh, sent a bill out for, I believe it was like 2400 so I've used more than half of that, um, and then I've, I've used 700 and something on the map machine. So uh, the majority of that has been uh, sent out, and, and there's not much left uh, in that operating expense budget anymore. Okay. And, and you've held those operating expenses constant for several, the last, at least the last three years. So. Yes, you. yes, that's correct, yes. So, Patty, um, you said microfish, right? Microfilm. Microfilm. Yeah. Are we going to move to something more digital? 
So what that actually is, uh, just to explain, is that all of our land records are, as you know, uh, right. permanent records on the screen, the book, yeah. but they're also yeah. online. And what happens is all of the images are also uh, sent to, um, we have a separate through uh, Adkins um, where it's sent to a separate site. Uh, so if we ever lost any of our images or or, or there was a destruction or a, a water leak or anything in yeah, our yeah. Home, we have the backup. So, so And that's required by law through okay. the state library. So that's what So happens. is that your kind of your firewall? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have the hard record for how long? The paper record. The paper record is permanent. Okay. And then you move it to microfilm. Yep. Immediately or within? So I do that usually twice a year. It's a okay. twice a year. Mm -hmm. So the permanent record is paper. Mm -hmm. And then we move to micro. Correct. How long do you think, and I'm just asking this not because it's important, I'm asking only because I've seen that vault. Yeah. And it's huge. <coughs> How long do you think that's going to, until it? Until I run out of room? Yeah. So the mayor and I have had multiple conversations actually on that because I have had to move uh, the records around um, several, quite times, off, yeah. several times since I've been yeah, No, I've been in there a couple so, times. Um, I have to, the older original, which are those, they're, they're yeah. bigger than the legal size. Yeah. They're, the, they're even longer and they're handwritten. So I've, yeah, the I've had to blue, start. Um, hard book. Yeah, and I've had to start moving them um, to another location slowly just to come around the, that last. Then that I'm location, on. Location, not in the town hall. So no, in in the town hall, um, I'm trying to keep them um, when you come into the vault to Secure. the left. But in, in, I very rarely get a searcher or an attorney who wants to look at them. But every once in a while, I do. Yeah. Eventually, I'm going to have to move them down into the vault downstairs. Most of them are. Correct. Right. Um, 50, 80 years old. Right. I'm thinking I, I can put another slide. I don't know if you to the back wall if you see yeah. the one that slides back and forth. I might be able to do another one to the left of that. Um. So that might buy me some time. Um. Mayor and I are talking. I mean. It's going to be, it's tough, to, it's tough to really know. It depends how busy we are with land records, but they've picked up. I'm saying like 12 to 15 years, I can probably, um, I can you get can out of, on. I can hold on um, with some, some of the sliders and stuff. Um, but then after that, and I have room for one more map cabinet, which that does take a long time to fill. Um, but after that, we're, we're going to be really uh, tight right. for space and wonder what we're going to do. So. Well, let me ask this question, and sure. I know it's a horrible question to ask. What happens if there's a fire or something? Yeah. So is, is everything gone? Well, we have, that's why we do have we all have the backup. have anything digitally? We have a lot of backup. I do back up my vital books as well from the microfilm, mm -hmm. so I have that. Um, I try to back up as much as, as I can and what allows. Um, things like uh, my DD-214s. Uh, are not digital, but I have That's not a big deal. right. I mean, we, but I mean, land records, but land records titles, are all. I do okay. have them all. They're my yeah. You got two four scenes. They everybody's got their own. Yeah, but but for land records, everything is microfilmed, so I would be able to go to my uh, the, you know, the off site and ask them. It would just, it would, it would be a lot of work. But there's grant uh, out there through the public library that would be able to help. Um, we, we, we have a lot of um, things that we're supposed to do and notify them immediately if we, if we ever had, whether it was a fire or water damage or whatever. Um, but, but hope, you know, and it would take a long time to get them off the microfilm and get them back in a book, but there we would have that. It would just take a lot of time and work. But it, right. it and, and I know that's not really a question for the meeting, the budget meeting, but it's, we only get to talk a couple Correct. times. Correct, yeah. So I Absolutely. just want to make sure that our records are secure, are secure. or have a, back up. a road to be secure. Right. Um, right. Not, not that it's a, I mean, ledger, it's, it's ledger. You know, we're not talking about New York City. But uh, I just want to make sure that we're thinking kind of forward right. here. Absolutely. Um, and if we need to fund it, let us know. Because I really think, you know, 
historical records are important. Right. Especially Absolutely. in a town like this. Right. Um, so the so in my budget, that's why I have the microfilm budget in there, so that I am able to, you know, every year get that year, that year that we're working on land records into microfilm, so they are backed up and stored. Okay. Um, and that's what the um, if you look to there's the microfilm storage. I have to pay a yearly fee for that as well to store it. But that's what is included in in there for that purpose. So now, was that stored in a server location? It's no, it's actually an offsite uh, location um, in in like a storage facility. Yeah, so like a server cloud. Yeah, exactly. That's fine. So yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And Thank you, Tom. Uh, Go ahead. I have one question. Um, not to belabor, but um, I think I put in my letter for justice of the peace like two months ago. I haven't got anything back. So the so a let yeah. So this is personal. That's it. so let so when we send the letters out, so it's so when you are uh, you, you're through the party. So when yeah. so once yeah. they appoint. Um, you have 10 days from the appointment, not from my letter, sure. to come right. in and Just get sign. sworn in. Yeah. Um, I also send the letter and, and let you know. Right. Once, it's once, on me. Yeah, so once that Got 10 last, day lasts, you can go back to them and ask them to reappoint you. So All you right, thank you. you. You're welcome. I'll stop wasting time. Okay, <laughs> you're fine. Okay, Councilor okay. Ingalls, questions? Yeah, so long run to, to Tom's questions about long-term storage, security, would there is there going to come a day? Maybe this is a question combination for the mayor and for Patty. Um, are we going to see some capital needs for long-term storage or securing the vault? In my eyes, a lot of it depends. I mean, if you see where technology has led us most recently in the cloud and digital backup here and there, 12 to 15 years needing more storage. 12 to 15 years record keeping will look vastly different than it does today. So I actually kind of think we won't need all of that. Okay. And so I would I would expect too that the state library would be adjusting its um, its requirements. So so as of right now the requirement is to still have permanent paper records. The going online, like we have all of our, most of our records um, back to volume 43 on our computers. Um, the microfilm's separate, but on our computers where people can come in and do the search. Um, not all town halls or clerk's offices are, that's not mandatory. Um, so some people are online. Like they, they, they're mandatory to have, have their records to go back a certain amount of years um, in the office but they're not mandatory to go past that those many years. So, um, and they're not mandated to go online outside of the office. And so there's a lot of um, clerks who are not. And um, about a, probably close to two years now, uh, there was an issue, uh, I believe it was in Fairfield County where um, there were some residents who were concerned because they had found that a lot of the some of the real old records had carried the social security numbers or last four digits of social security numbers, and at that point, you know, it could have been with the IRS they used to do it or, or certain things. Um, so they were pretty livid that those were being out there to the public, even though it's a public record and in the vault as a public record. They thought being online and and, and seeing that was appalling. So there was a really big deal with that, and a lot of clerks. Um, got their advisement through their town attorney um, and mayor's assessments, and some of them actually took their records offline um, and have not gone back up because of that issue. So there's a lot, we've had a lot of meetings with the association to uh, address that, um, but there's, there's no happy medium between the title searching company, the attorneys, the clerks association uh, to reconcile that issue. Um, and so at this point, you know, the mandate is still permanent paper records. Um, do I think that eventually something could possibly change as the mayor said, yes, I just think they just can't find a workaround yet. Um, and because we're unique in New England and not by county, mm -hmm. by individual towns, um, you know, unless something changes again with that as well, um, I think that that's kind of been the lying issue for a few years now. 
So mm -hmm. it, okay. it's hard to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just got one more crazy question. <laughs> so how far can I go back and look? So you can go back from, from the beginning in the vault, but on the computer you can go back to, to volume 43. So as an example, my wife works in the school system. She was cleaning out some record rooms, and she found a document, and she gave it to the principal. But <clears throat> the document was from 1890, like, and it was for the restoration of a sheep that was um, killed by some dog. Believe it or not, and it, you know, the town paid three dollars. Could I go look <clears throat> and find that? So it was a no, yeah, I, I, I'm just using that as no, a, oh, okay. I mean, if it was if it was a transfer, if it was a land wrapper, yeah, it, 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 it was it paid, was, and it was you know, it was, it was when paid by the town it was established then it would be here. Now, remember, there was a short time where, or a year before that, where Groton had part of, right, you know, North so Groton. they, it, you know, some of those older ones in that section would be there in Groton, but if it was in Ledger, and it would be. Now, I'm just asking the yeah, question, absolutely. because she showed me this document, I said, yeah. that looks like a ledger, mm -hmm. and it was paid for, right. because someone's sheep had been attacked by dogs. Yeah. <clears throat> on town property, and the town paid three dollars for the sheep. Yeah, as long as it was brought in to, to put on the record, you know, like it probably should have been, then it would be there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they bartered, or they, you know, yeah. there's like a an exchange. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I I just um, I I don't want to belabor it. But, yeah. That's okay. So, um, Patty, thank you very much. I just need to correct. Uh, myself, I was looking at the wrong line for operating expenses, so I apologize. Yours are uh, showing as of okay. twelve thirty, so I, I take that back. I hope I didn't confuse everything. That, no, so. thank you. I was kind of wondering, but that you know why I yeah. wasn't there. But thank you for telling me that. Yep. Operating Thanks. is actually double that right now. It's about twenty-two thousand currently spent. Well, yeah. that, that that's what yeah. caused me to start looking because she said it was but might be up to twenty four. I thought, well that doesn't look right. I knew so it was thank you. To, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually I was I was looking at the registrars who are next. So Patty, thank you very much and appreciate your time and your work. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Sorry for the delay of getting the budget up there. I had an old link and I was in a meeting with nobody and I didn't know it. <laughs> How'd that happen to me last night? <laughs> Pretty I'm like, wait a minute, well, I don't see anybody's screens here. Yeah. Oh, I know. Roxanne takes good care of that. <laughs> Looks like it just came from Marv. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Hazel, Marsha, thank you for coming. And uh, the only question I have on your budget is regarding what I just asked. Operating expenses as of 12:31 were zero. I'm sure they're not. Uh, so, do we have an update on that that column? On which which item? Operating expenses. Under registrar. Yeah, our year to date is December 31st. Right, I so see that. The which is, yeah. the information under the operating. Ex uh, expenses is due to the fact that what we want to do is uh, operating expense. I didn't know. Which one do you want? <clears throat> did, is it, did we prove that somewhere? Is it, it, which one do you want? It is zero as of today. Oh, it is. It is. Huh. Really? I'm not under admin. Well, admin. you know what? As a matter of fact, uh, under back, we don't do those. <laughs> those are done by the mayor. Yeah, it's been zero for four years. Boom. For actual. I think it's time that we should have at least a thousand dollars more in there, at least. I'm being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's all because of the mayor. The the top two expenditures, the general government and the registrars and the operating expenses fall under the mayor's purview. He's been handling those for at least four years. <laughs> 
credits all your we we handle from everything else from elections down well it looks like the last time that money was used uh, oh, five years ago it, yes and it was envelopes for mandated canvas right. from adkins right. which i'm assuming is now coming out of another yeah. account yes so well, you can, can probably we take... delete that then because the mayor doesn't okay. do anything with it well, the only comment I was going to make with regard to that is the fact that under the um, other supplies, where we have a, it's 8,000, I guess, is what you have right now, is that under other supplies, what we are contemplating doing is we, we need to replace our uh, voting booths. The ones that we have are falling apart, and they're bending. And we were going to look at purchasing ones from Inclusion Solution, which I have information on to share. Um, and for their voting booths that are set up when there are four stations for voting booths. Everything is compact. I can show you a picture of it, actually. Hazel, which, which line is that that's under elections? Yeah, all of the things under elections are stipe, equipment, communications, yep. Yep. other supplies. And the one that we're on right now was the one under other supplies where it was 11,000 and your proposal was to have it 8,000 for the next year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. These are, this is a, you can't see it, unfortunately, I'll leave it here. But there's a picture of a voting booth that we're looking they at purchasing. Yeah. There were four <laughs> station voting booths. Okay. The people yep. stand at so yep. in person what we have. And we would need six of them, three for each district. And the total would come to uh, five thousand four two hundred and fourteen dollars is the cost for that. So that would be twelve stations. Twelve stations each, each district. Station. Right. Okay. Right now as you know, the ones that we use are those heavy cumbersome. Yep. Uh, well, big ones yeah, with and, it. The, and the legs are all bending on them, and we're now being reduced by number of the ones that we put. Are we still going to be shooting the... Uh, yeah, that's the tabulator. In, into the... Right. That's, that's the tabulator that okay. put the ballots through. So that was the only um, item, line item, that we were going to uh, refer to today, which which is that one. So that's really a capital <clears throat> Right. Bill, no, this is Marcia. Um, I just looked up and the registrars have $2,600 in a capital account called new yep. equipment. So that right. could offset the 5,000 if you decide to go that way. Yep. yep. Yeah. And the only other one is the one that we talk about under stipend and the items that are listed under stipend. Uh, now that Masha, we're lucky to have Masha as our new Republican registrar and she is going to have to go to school. <clears throat> And under that stipend account, that's where we have listed the expenses for uh, UConn courses. Masha has to be certified. And uh, as Nancy and I, we had to spend a year and a half at school, which the towns are liable to pay and the state does not pay for. And it, run, it ran off, Nancy and I, when we each were certified, it was over $3,000 each for our certifications to the state. So that's why I so, didn't, that's why we didn't really reduce that. So is stipend the right, the right place to do that or should it be training? Well, I think over the course of my tenure here, sometimes those titles get changed and okay. different line items get put under them. And uh, just to start to interrupt, sure. uh, the last time we did training, it was used out of our, uh, the operating <laughs> expense under registrars that hasn't been used. Yeah. It was 2017, it looks like. Yeah. Um, and that's where the expenses for the training came out of. But we've changed over the years, those headings for different and various things. The listing that I have, this is one that we had for stipends. It was poll worker training, uh, recertification for the CEUs for the registrars. Um, Cost of possible changes to early voting and absentee. We were, getting, we were a little clairvoyant, I think, when we did this. But uh, there are going to definitely be changes in that whole realm, and there's going to be financial impact. What we don't know because we haven't crossed that bridge yet. But other equipment and maintenance, we have tabulated maintenance, which has increased. That's through 
the maintenance company that takes care of the tabulators that's done annually. Uh, communications, we have all the postage, is all the postage by Canvas that we are invested in right now. Once a year, we're mandated by law to conduct a Canvas and go from January 1st to the end of April. That means we communicate with every registered voter in the town of Legend and people out of state that we've heard from, from the post office and for in-town changes that we also hear from the post office. They all receive literature and we make changements and adjust it to the voting list predicated on the returns that come back <coughs> from the mailings that are done to the national change of address to the state. Um, let's see what other things are under there. Uh, okay, so, we're also so going to be... Hazel, I, Hazel I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I, we yep. need to focus on what we need to do with the budget. So okay. I, I lost track of what, which line items need more money and which don't. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the capital. We've got half of the money for the voting voting booths and capital, that but we've got $1,776 that hasn't been spent. And then uh, you were talking about training, but I'm hearing it's coming from stipends. No, it wasn't. So can we go through the line items and talk about what needs to change one by one, starting okay, with stipends? Stipends? Okay. The only thing I'm considering is that the state will let us know when they have things for us to attend, when we have to take courses, when we have to keep up our CEUs to be certified as registrars of the state of Connecticut. It also requests that Basha also receive her initial certification, which has to be done. So I put my, so left the money in there for that. So the 14000 in, in where? In where? Stipends. Stipends, that's what Stipend. you just said. So why, why don't we use training for training? and certification? Well, I, I don't have powers to change those accounts. Um, that comes from the... Yeah. You we can add a training line if you like, yes. But well, we have a training line. We have a training line called probably, training I, under I, other I expenses. Probably, yeah, I would probably call it mandatory training or state mandate. Why? Now, only because if we don't <laughs> you don't say it like that, then people will think, well, you know, it's a slush fund. Yeah. I think I made a comment with regards to those headings under election, is that they periodically, they get changed as need be from the whole process that you're going through right now. So the I understand. So, so what do we need to put in the training line for our proposed budget for March's certification? How much money? 300? We have... Oh, three, it'll cost three thousand dollars to get her to the final okay. loan. Yeah. But I would only go back to and leave it at fifteen. So you're only increasing it by one thousand dollars. <throat> so that stipend line I would increase by one, leave it at fifteen for the training that's going to take place. And the only other item that we would change would be other supplies where we have eight thousand we now have a couple of thousand that Marsha just shared with us. So I would increase that by another thousand. I think All what right. Bill is saying is we're going to remove 3,000 from stipends for the training and put it under a line that's called training. That's what right. he wants to do. And, and so and I'm, and looking, I'm looking at a line item called training. But it's not in the register, yeah, but, right? Yeah. It's so, under election. But Hazel also mentioned that this is going to take more than one calendar year. So is it necessary to put the full three grand in one budget or should it just be 15, assuming it's going to pay out over two budgets? But then under that, the state doesn't always delineate exactly what courses they even want the registrars to take with regards to maintaining our CEUs to update. So it's like a nebulous floating number so okay. the state lets us know uh, what they want us to do. Okay. Now, under, if you look at the town legit budget departmental request, they have, a, you have it broken down on your program, and under the program you have a listing of all the things that fall under those designated lines. This one here is... You know, So then you know what's under them. And then the stipend right. back there. 
training. Ian and, and Marcia, um, I'm, I'm no. just going to take notes on what we need, and we can, during our budget work session, our next finance committee, we can work on what we need to do with changing this budget. But I've got $3,000 needed for certification. I've got $5,200 needed for voting booths. Is there anything else that we need to spend that, no. in your opinion, is not in the budget? No. No. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll come back to this and adjust it as needs so we get the money in the right places. Does that sound fair? Fine. Okay. Um, communications line uh, under election is running at 29%. Um, and in years past, it's run $400, $600, $400, and we've got 2,500 proposed in the budget. So Ian, could you look up and tell us where we are with communications year to date under elections? Uh, 234.50, but there's also money that's been transferred out. So that okay. it looks like they did a budget transfer. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's a previous year. I'm in the wrong okay. page. Sorry, right. I've been there. <laughs> One moment, please. <laughs> Currently, we are at $1,182 spent. Wow. Okay. Out of? Communications. 2,500. So we're about oh. half ish. And we're, we're budgeted for 2,500. Um, we're about half. Years, years past. So. So. Okay. Has his, uh, I'm sorry, Bill. Uh, no, go ahead, Bill. Has it been historically underspent or? Uh, last year, out of $2,500, $603. 2019 was $427. Um, and money was transferred out. So it was, it was spent. So it's kind of historically underspent. A little bit. Well, what, one year we did the communication about the changing of uh, polls. That had to go up to the, we had to blanket that information to the whole town, as we will have to do with regards to proposals that are going to come down from the state with regards to voting. It looks like historically it has been underspent, but if it was underspent, the money was transferred. Yeah, elsewhere. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to take money away. I'm just trying to get a feel for where the money has been allocated. I think that the, base, the basic concern that we've had, and we've had it in the past also, that when we even get the budget, we don't know what's going to be where because the, the names of things get changed. If I go back historically and take and bring up all of the budgets we've gone through, there's things get changed uh, and probably certainly need to be. That's why they get changed. Right. I mean, it's dynamic. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, then it's clear that when we're talking about certain things in particular, they may have appeared under another heading under elections at sure. one point yep. and then got changed to another title. But your overall budget is it's usually expended exactly. to whatever the budget yes. amount is, within should, 10%. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, that's yeah. why I thought so. I'm just trying to, as Bill said, you know, maybe we need to allocate some money to training and call it training yes. versus Absolutely. a stipend. Um, I think your budget is very, very tight, and I think you, you, you all do a great job with it. So um, I'm not trying to change the, the, non, the bottom line. I'm just asking you know, do we need to allocate monies in, into the right spot? Absolutely. And have a heading that is relevant right. to yeah. the monies that are in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I agree. Bill? Okay. Uh, Bill? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, what is the, because 
we're all into communications. You know, we've worked really hard on the council uh, to communicate uh, what we do. What is the function of the communications budget in the um, in this uh, particular budget? That has to do with the canvas that we conduct every year uh, for information for all the mailing and all of the uh, information that we have to send to voters who presently live here and those who may have relocated and those who have changed from one district to another. That's one part of it. Uh, anytime there's new relevant changes, i.e. example, when we established and changed, uh, added the in District 2, and we had Julie Long and Galesbury, where they were, lo their location, every bit of information that changes or impacts the voter in any, any way, they must receive information. So we do mailings out to them. Uh, in, the, in the near future, I see that there will have to be mailings done with regard to absentee ballot voting. There'll have to be uh, information blanketing the whole town. That's a lot of inf that's a lot of mail when you're talking about, you know, 10,000 people in your town. It has to do with that early voting. Any issue that comes up that has an impact on voters, they have to receive information relevant to that. So. And when, the, when you see the word canvas, it's not as simplistic as just the word, because there are certain forms that have to be used for certain populations of voters within, that, within the framework of that, that heading. Got it. Thank you. And thank you for the question, Linda. Uh, so, Tom, Andre, any other questions for the registrars? I'm good. Okay. Hazel, Would Marcia, like thank you very much for coming. Thank right. You. And we'd also like to take this time to thank uh, the support because we've had a hectic year, <laughs> to say the least, during the election. You sure have. And that we had outstanding, outstanding poll workers in the town of Legend that you can call on them morning, no. noon, and the night. The volunteers and are They separate out. And in particular, we had uh, uh, eight new absentee ballot counters that we trained and worked with, and they did a, a just an outstanding standing job. I mean, our numbers were right on the money, which is perfect. So I thank everybody from top to bottom for helping us get through this election that the eyes of the world were truly upon. <laughs> thank you. And, and we thank you, Hazel. I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was at Gallup Hill School at 6 a.m. for most of the morning, and I was there well into the night when you guys did the final tabulations, and you all worked very hard. That line wrapped around the school most of the day. That was incredible. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, you too. You. Sure. Thank you. you too. Hey, perfect timing, huh? Nope. Oh. Not perfect timing. Thank you. You are, sir. I think I see Mr. Godino. You do. All right. Do we have anybody with him? No, he did the right thing. I had Alan, Alan Ganong, uh, who runs the, the operation at the sawmill, was going to call in or dial in. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the line. He's on the line? Okay, good. Thanks, Alan. Hi, Alan. Hi, Bill. So, um, Vin, I know you've you've got some things that the historic district uh, is, has been working on and needs some help with. So, uh, do you want to say a few words before we start in with questions? Sure. Um, the um, at the uh, the Lester House, um, one of one of one actually two two of the the uh, caretakers children tested high for lead. So that gets reported to Lead Light. Oh my. And I've been working with uh, Fred, the mayor's office, has been, been helping us. We need to have it remediated. And remediation involves removal of lead from sliding surfaces like windows, doors, so forth where there's rubbing and the lead paint that's been covered over many times 
uh, flakes or causes dust. So we're in the process of getting quotes to do that. And the sooner the better. I'm in communication with um, uh, Let Ledge Light. They want to know that we're working on the problem, uh, obviously. The kids right now, their the most recent test is they're okay. They're below the levels. And I think that's due to the fact that, that uh, Rebecca has been cleaning like a, a maniac uh, windows and so forth. So that's something we think we're going to strive to get done this fiscal year. We'd like to have it done for the summer. Things are looking good for reopening the house and uh, go back to our regular tours and so forth. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I said a little bit late. Can you just cat me on the house? Thank you. What are the caretakers? I, I, I'm sorry. The my hearing is so bad. Yeah, so is mine. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you to recap. One of the caretaker's children at the Lester house tested high yes. for lead, so they're looking at remediation. Oh, it was one of the caretakers. Yeah, she has, okay. she has uh, uh, an, 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 an infant. Two years old. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, I know them. But he's, he's okay Brilliant. now, and so is the older boy. Okay. But we have to fix it. I'm yeah, uh, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. I okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Dan, can I just add something quick? Can I add please. something quick? Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Furthering the complication of this, the quote that was received came in like 30% over the maximum threshold on the purchasing ordinance, so we have to go to bid. Really? How, how much was the quote? $20,500. Wow. Oh. Yeah, this is not a small project. What is it, 15? Uh, uh, 15 is the threshold. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I found two other contractors who actually I like. <laughs> these, okay, these but it won't, it won't matter. matter. But I'm, yeah, I'm awaiting yeah, I'm I'm yeah. two more bids. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I mean, suppose they come in under 15000 what do, uh, we, what do we have to do? Yeah, I mean, is it possible that somebody could come in 30% lower than the one that we've received already? Yeah, yeah that, that's kind of questionable. But we have to be ready to move forward. No, with our I agree. We would still have to advertise. Yeah, I agree with the mayor. If, if none of the bids come in below $15,000, then without a doubt, we have to go to Then we have. But if I got to a bid or two that were under 15. Yeah, a different story. Yep. We, we might be able to do a select. Okay. Yeah, but we can't we can't cajole that. That's all I'm saying. Um, I I had a radon problem in the home um, that I owned, um, and and you know, I'm just gonna let it go. Just you got to do the right thing. That's all I'm saying. The, um, the, the it, it could be, this sounds serious and it is, but it could be worse. The ledge light has called for remediation, which is what we're, what we're doing. Right. It's a suspected where right. the source With the is ventilation system and, system and all that. If, if it had been labeled as uh, an abatement that we had to do an abatement, Okay. They come in, they check it. I mean, it gets really, really, really expensive and complicated. Yeah, yeah. So, and she seems, you know, just like a reasonable person, but uh, obviously safety of the kids is paramount for everybody. So. Bill? Bill? Yes, Linda. Yeah. Are, has anybody looked into um, grants for historic um, buildings? Um, you would Property. think something would be available when it comes to something like this. Agreed. Well, it, it, maybe we we've been uh, we're, we're pursuing a grant for the sawmill for some some work there. Okay, but uh, I'm talking specifically about. Um, a historic building 
the tests positive for lead paint. And I wonder if there is anything available because I'll tell you before I would support spending that kind of money, I would make sure, I would want to make sure that avenue was pursued because it seems like it's a um, that something like that should be available. I mean, other historic homes should have run into this. We can't be the first town to have run into this. Yeah, yeah. good suggestion. Is there, is there some, I understand there's someone in the town hall that works with grants. Is that true? Yeah, that, Liz has been doing that. Yep. Is this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my friend. Hmm? Contact my friend. Well, I was going to contact the state yeah. historic preservation office. That's probably the best avenue. Can, can, can I that person, can that person maybe help us at least get started with yeah. where the sort the you know, what are the sources for that kind of money? Because I personally don't have a, a clue where, where to start looking. Yeah, no, no. There, there's grants available, like the mayor said and, and Mary said. You know, there's state and federal funding that are, um, I'm not sure if they're available, but you can apply for, so my plan you know, lead abatement oh, or oh, radon oh, abatement oh, or something oh, like that. And Mike would be the so person. people that can research that. Well, so, so uh, Vin, we, there are also some other expenses associated with this. Uh, we may have to, or we do have to move the family out. So there's some living expenses as well. Could you speak to that? Yes. Um, the uh, con the I've asked these contractors uh, about how long they think it would take, and it's probably three to four weeks that they would they would uh, need to be in in the house without the, the tenants. Huh? It sounds reason reasonable to me. Uh, we are looking for a large RV trailer okay uh, this this is suggested by by by, by Rebecca this was suggested I, by the tenant by, by the, the family the current tenant she wants okay she would like to stay on the property if if possible, okay which I think is a am I the only one I, I, think, I think the mayor we talked about it thinks it is too having somebody there is you know if we don't have somebody there the place is taken that that person gonna happen you know that's not good and and this might be uh uh might even be the most cost effective way to to uh, uh solve solve that but that that problem there's well, a husband and wife that. and two kids right pardon husband wife two kids the three family kids. The three, three kids, kids. Three kids. Okay, so there are three, yeah. and one of them is an infant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm just we can't. Oh, there's, there's <laughs> uh, Doug Kelly. He's on the, the commission. The horse here. What? Yeah. So, folks, I, I'm going to ask that we just do a time check. We are running now 20 minutes late, so I'm going to ask if we okay. can move things along a little more quickly. Um, First of all, Mayor, I don't know who else to ask, but, but I'm going to ask if you could have someone from your staff work with the Historic District Commission, because I agree, uh, this, this is potentially a much larger expense than we may think, and we should be looking at grants. We've already learned that we've got to go out to bid. So um, if you can find someone from your staff to work with the commission on this, I, I think it would be the right thing to do. And then we'll need to come back and look at, at what the cost will be as well as, as uh, what's in the capital and, and, and what they have in their budget. Is that, is that okay? Perfectly fine. Absolutely. Be good. Thanks. Okay, so, great. So let's, let's jump back into the expense budget. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, every, everything looks to me to be pretty close. Um, I know that there are some additional expenses coming up, like we just talked about, and I think Alan Ganong is going to talk about some more that we're working on for the sawmill. So I don't have any question about expense. Uh, Councilors Ingalls and Malone, did, did you have any questions? No. 
I'm all set. But we need to settle the issue with the lesser house for sure. Totally agree. Yeah, um, totally agree. Yeah. Moving forward, <clears throat> because that has a potential to to be expensive and hazardous. So. Right. Right. So the mayor has been working with the commission right along on this. So it, it's not like we're just discovering it. No, no, um, no. I understand, Bill. So, yep. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask Mr. Ganong if, if he has anything that he'd like to tell us about the sawmill. Uh, well, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm happy to, if, if, if uh, first I'd ask if there's any specific questions about those, about the line items that are in the sawmill. I, and, I had none. Uh, and, I think Tom's okay, Andre. No. And, <clears throat> and and if and if and if not, um, just mention uh, it. Uh, reiterating what uh, Vince said, we're looking into the possibility for a grant from Preservation Connecticut, uh, which is the new name of the Connecticut um, Historic Preservation. Uh, and uh, that's for uh, some work on the water system in the sawmill. Um, we need to have uh, an inspection done because we're concerned there might be a structural issue with the sawmill building. And both of those things, I guess, are uh, capital uh, items that we see coming up in the next few years. The other thing we've done in the past few months is develop a list of capital items, uh, various kinds of repairs for the most part and uh, maintenance type things that really don't fit in the normal line items, but probably will be capital items going forward for the next two, three, four years. So um, we're developing that list now. Thank you. Alan, I'm handing out copies of, of the list you put together. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, sir. I, th I think this goes along. I, you, you folks have suggested in the past that we, for, for capital, that we develop a, a long range plan mm -hmm. that has all the things that we anticipate timing and approximate budget. And this, this is a start. At that for the sawmill. It Thank needs you. work, obviously. There are a lot of missing pieces. Mm -hmm. But it's a start. I want to do no, the same thing. It's good. It's good. Thank you. And I, I see an Eagle Scout project on here that I love. Oh! <clears throat> Last one. I so love me place. some Eagle Scout stuff. My son's an Eagle Scout. I'm an Eagle Scout. There you go. I owe that. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And thank you, Vin, for the plan. Um, good start. Although I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get you. One, we'll get you one, Bill. Uh, Bill, a copy. I know you will. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any other commission or questions for the commission? No, sir. No, sir. All righty. Thank you both very much, Vin and Alan. Thanks, man. Appreciate. You. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, just, mm -hmm. yeah. So next up we have nursing, and yeah. I can't. It's, Karen's here. Karen's here. Karen's here. Good. All right. Is anyone with? Oh, Steve. Uh, he's good. He's good. Still working. Always working every day. Excuse me. Bill. Yeah, I I didn't hear that. So Karen is here. Yeah, well. we're committed. Oh, that's it. Nancy didn't come. Did you want her to? Nancy no, 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 no. I, I'm just trying to keep track for the uh, for the minutes. She, she, yeah, she might have. I asked her to zoom in, but I don't know. She was here earlier, and she was struggling to get her audio up, but I think she managed to get it up. I, I think she's on the phone. Who's on the phone? No, I, I, phone. I don't think she is. I think she may have dropped. She was on the Oh, there she is again. She's calling back in.
So it looks like looks like she's back with us um, and muted. So let me jump to the next section. Whatever you'd like. Um, so um, the first question I had was about the increase in the assistant wages. And I suspect I know the answer, but I'm sure other people would like to know too. Could you speak to that, please, Karen? Um, sure, on the home care side, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah, um, so the home care side, um, as you know, our biggest um, job is not only taking care of patients, but chasing the money. So it's gotten more difficult with the changes, um, the splintering of insurances a million ways. United Healthcare has a 20 million um, different uh, little subsets anyway. So chasing the money has gotten harder and harder for Nancy. So Nancy, um, we talked about it and looked at it and her workload. So she had to go to 40 hours to be able to do her work. Um, so that was one increase. Then the other part of it is Jean, my administrative assistant. We need a backup for Nancy. If she goes out, no one knows how to find right. the money. Single point trader. Right. So there is, there is no backup. I mean, knock wood, we've been, you know, lucky. So Jean's job description was um, changed um, to add um, an assistant to the medical biller, and she's learning to be backup um, to the sense that, Medicare now, when we have a patient come in, they give us four days to get it coded, finish it, send it in. We don't get it in in four days. You don't get the you get money. paid. Yeah. So, what about regular insurance, yeah. like United Healthcare? I'm just picking United. United Healthcare is a managed care advantage. So right now they follow some of the regs, but they don't follow the get your get it in in four days or you lose your money. Right. So within a week or so. Um, there, believe it or not, there. Are you right, Nancy? Ten days. I don't have a microphone. I'm on the phone. Whose phone is she on? You can. You just can do yeah, I'm just picking United Healthcare. Right, Nancy. Can you hear? Um, so United, there, they don't have the same time limits as Medicare, traditional. Or Tricare, or. Tricare is. Cost you she might have to press star six. Okay. Nancy, if you can hear us, you might need to press star okay. six. There we go. There she is. Can you hear me? There she is. All right. Yes. yes okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, all right. We just, all right. We just had a question about the um, different insurances. So Medicare traditional is four days to find the money or we don't get paid for the visits we make. All right. If we don't get the rep and then they're going to take 20%. Right off the bat, they don't pay you from whatever day you get it in. They start paying from the day after. So if, say, I'm six to eight days later, they're going to not pay me until day eight. Even though if I've done five visits before day eight, I won't get paid for any of those visits prior to that. It's ruthless. No, no. It's, it's, it's insurance. It's, uh, but but this, this just changed January 1st. Um, so every year they change it, make it harder for us to find money. So, and then United Healthcare, Nancy, they're just, they don't have that time limit. I, I don't have that same, uh, yeah. I don't have it with United Healthcare at this time, but I do have it with my Aetna Medicares and my TRICARE, um, any of those that uh, awesome. bill final, wraps and finals like Medicare. They follow their model. Yes, Mary? I'm trying to get you off original traditional Medicare to go to the uh, Advantage plans. Probably. The government and their wisdom might be saying, why should we pay traditional when someone's going to manage the care for us? Mm -hmm. So maybe that's probably why to say, you know, yeah. so that's, so hence. It's a little tighter. Advantage plans are tighter. And you can't go out of network without paying a fee? Correct. So depending on the plan, and there's a lot of plans now, Nancy's got to get authorization, how many visits, how many PTs, how many skilled nurses. So this is not just, oh, sign up and you have as many as you want anymore. So now they're micromanaging us, hence why Jean um, is helping Nancy 
So when, if Nancy is out and that wrap needs to be billed that day, we well, need someone to bill it. So, Nan, so Jean can jump over and bill and save us 20%. Right, so which we didn't need prior to this you know, change that occurred in January. January 1st. So, so the, the money that, so Jean gets paid just for what she works. Um, Got it. So if she, yep. if she works an hour or a half hour, she'll add that on to her day, but it's not every day. This is Got just it. when Nancy is not around. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Very good answer. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, next item is uh, still under home health nursing, nurses' aides, uh, yeah. as of 1231, was 27%, uh, sorry, 27% spent, easy for me to say. Um, I was curious if you anticipate coming in lower for the year, or will that catch up? Um, 27 that we've spent so far? 27% of your budget. Your budget spent halfway through the year. So it should normally we look for it to be around fifty percent. There are lots we of reasons. Look for it to about 50, 45, 50. So the problem with this year is um, COVID. So when COVID came, my um, home health aides who were at the age where they should not be working, they had to leave me. And they've been with me forever. So that oh. was a huge they that was a huge loss. And um, how many people we thought we had five? We had four, five. Well, we had four home health aides, so two of them had aged. The, the doctors wouldn't let them in, they shouldn't have been in. Age out. and so they age out. Um, they're at risk, so they couldn't take care of patients. Um, and then we have one that we just had to let go. Um, and so right now, I have one aide, Got so it. I'm okay. I'm advertising. Um, I am, but it's a tough job because it's a per diem job. Um, mm -hmm. We were talking about making it maybe 21 hours, so I would get someone and they would be there. You know, I would know yep. and yep. have them there. So that's where we're going ahead. So that's why we're low because of COVID. And patients did not want us in the house. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. Because of COVID, the yeah. less staff available, the less staff seeing them they wanted, so we minimized as much as we could to keep them out. So that's why it's where it is this year. I'm okay. hoping Got it. we hire staff, we go back up to over 50%. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so I suspect that probably may also apply to clothing allowance. That's a zero. Cool. Clothing does, it, allowance? does it get paid at the end of the year? It gets paid um, twice a year. Twice, okay. Okay, that, that's good enough. Understood. Lots, lots of things happen that way. Um, repairs and maintenance uh, running at ten percent. What are your thoughts on that year to date? Where is which one? Repairs um, and maintenance. Yeah. That's our um, at, as of twelve thirty one. Well, now we've at, as of right now we've expended seventeen thousand of it. That's our uh, okay. our Carefax. It's our annual con, uh, contract that we have with our software people. Okay. And that Got doesn't it. get that didn't get paid until after the new year. Yep. Because it typically gets paid for uh, February. That's probably one of the questions I ask every year and forget the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've heard that before, Bill. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Um, next one is operating expenses, also yeah. running late year to date, but that's often because we we just haven't caught up. So that was at twelve thirty one. It was twenty eight percent. Where are you now? Right. Yeah. Now I've, I've expended as of, uh, what six thousand two hundred fifty eight at this point. So that's about fifty percent. Yeah. Two, five, what, eight. Got it. Thank you. We have three, yeah, we have three months left. Three, four months to pay. For okay. Bills. There's another four thousand in company. Yeah. Um, and the the last full year of expense we had was thirteen five, and we're at twelve six for budget. So I don't see that we can do much with that. 
Um, next question is community health program. I remember we've asked this before. I don't remember the answer. Um, <laughs> well, the, co the community health was, uh, you know, when we were doing, that's our outreach that we do when we're advertising. Um, it is been reduced so far this year because we didn't have to do the annual postcards that we've done in the past. Since okay. we have that uh, newsletter that goes out to the town now, we've been, you know, putting our ad typically in there now. Mm -hmm. So we is had that we... something. Go ahead, Karen. No, I just said I think we had decreased that, hadn't we, Nancy? Yes, I believe that we did decrease that coming forward. Um, F20, we were budgeted at 51.50, and we're still budgeting 51.50. But if you want to reduce it, we are happy to accommodate that. <laughs> yeah, no, we, <laughs> yeah. no we, we can certainly reduce that because um, because yeah, we had talked about reducing it by you know because typically those uh, um, when we were doing the postcards, it was about 2,000 for that. True, and and we also do um, PPE. So the PPD clinic for the fire, <coughs> they don't come out of this line item anymore. They come out of the nurses line item um, okay. that does it, and the staff. So we, it's not in this. It doesn't live here anymore for that. Um, okay. And then, yeah, and then so we can reduce that. Abs absolutely, by at least three thousand. Okay, sold. <coughs> So I'm just going to put in the notes for now, Marsha Hancock reduced by 3,000. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the last thing I have under home health aids is uh, I wanted to note that we show a total, total expense of $875,000 uh, in the proposed budget. Um, but the revenue is nearly all of that. Proposed, or, um, actually, it's more than that. The proposed revenue in the in this budget is nine hundred thousand. So, uh, home health nursing is still a for-profit enterprise for the town. So, we thank you guys for that. We we always want to recognize that fact. Well, thank you. Thank you. We uh, <coughs> we, we try and um, and. And as you know, healthcare marches on, and um, people receive home care. They realize the quality we bring to it over other agencies, and um, and they they I think they're starting to get it. The residents of Ledger to you know ask for so. us and get better. I, I that's my hope. You know that's yep. that's that's my goal for what 25 years. So hopefully I'll get there. Do we use the, the town newsletter to remind people of that? Yep, I do every quarter. And in fact, it just was in there if anybody read it about it was a you know, question <laughs> and answers about what's you know true and not true about home care today. Because it's a really hard concept. It's, it seems easy, but it's not. Yeah, home care is, yeah. is, is it's, tough. It's, uh... Yeah, your doctor says to you, okay, I'm going to give you, um, have you see a visiting nurse. They don't say which agency. They just throw them to, if they're with Hartford Healthcare, they throw them to there. If they're with Yale, they go to VNASC. So they, and the patient doesn't know enough to say, well, I want Ledger. Yep. So that's, that's our goal. That's always been the goal. So, and then the more people I get in, the more money I get in. The, what they do now is they claim, well, this is very specialized work, so here's your exactly. nurse. Right. And then, right. And then you can say, well, you can go on the Medicare um, Home Care Compare, and you can look at, at and that's what I put in the, um, the event magazine, that you have a choice, and they cannot dictate who you go to. That's your insurance money. So. Yeah. So I did not have questions on school nursing other than a comment. The entire budget for school nursing is proposed at 11% below last year, which is great. Um, so thank you for that. Well, we, you know, I've tried to, you know, where we can, where we can and still give the, you know, still give them a school nurse and an assistant. Yep. yep. 
I so had that lunch. was my question. Yes. Um, Karen, uh, my question's basically the same as Bill's. Um, understanding that you know, kids are not in school as much. How much time are we spending, or are you spending, taking care of kids in the school? The nurses? Yeah. Now or last year? Um, flip. Um, well, last year there was none, because the nurses stayed in the classroom, their union, and they stayed there. There were no students. This year, luckily... So we paid them... Right. ...to just show up. Yes. Okay, that's fine. And then this year, luckily, school has been able to, you know, have a, a great year. I mean, I thought it would last two weeks. And so they have been they have been in the... Um, but we've had so many COVID changes mm -hmm. and regulations from the governor and CDC that they, they've been... This has been, even though the capacity is not 100%, in fact, today on Rotary, the superintendent was saying that they're going to go back up to 70%. Our so, superintendent or? Jay. Jay. Okay. So he had said that this morning, that they're going to 70%. So, and then in the fall, I look like they're going to be full-time. Everyone will be back. So we, we have a nurse in every school and um, an assistant 19 hours in each school to assist. And the Is that like a med assist? Or? That's, that's just a um, somebody to help cover lunches, to do um, the bulletin boards, to run errands and stuff. So there's not a right. medical assistant. It's just okay. a um, CPR first aid certified. Yeah. And EMT. Not even an EMT. They're just, they have no other qualifications other than CPR and first aid. Okay. And they got to like kids. Like a lifeguard. So much for lifeguard. They're paraprofessionals, they're called. Um, so they're in the school because schools are, depending on your school, some are a little bit busier than others. And I'm not going to name which ones are which, but they're. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're, um, but, they, but they need a nurse in every school, so. Okay. And that's um, so that's it. Any other well, we're covering it, right? We're covering the schools. You mean with the budget? Yeah, not so much the budget, but the nurses. Yeah, we 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 yes, we will. No one's going to complain to the mayor okay. that they have, don't have a um, a nurse in the school, a parent. So we're working with them, and um, it's fine. So yeah, so I, they'll they'll be happy. No one can. So okay. that's it. Any questions, Bill? Any more? Um, I have no more, Karen, but I want to ask Councillor Ingalls if she has any. I have no questions. Okay. okay. Thank you. Tom? No. Okay. Ta Karen, thank you very much. Nancy, thank you. We appreciate you thank you. joining us. Oh, thank you. Thanks right. again. Thanks have a good again. day. Bye. Thanks. You don't want me and to Nick with Right. We're good. Yeah, we're good. All right. Bye, guys. Thank Thanks, you. Karen. Thanks, Karen. All right. Back on track with the schedule, Bill. All right. We got there. Thank you. So, Senior Center, who do we have? Scott Up here. Just walking. Hey, Scott. Got some <coughs> Sorry about that. Another Wait, what? We're trying to get right. Just stop that. Um, <laughs> What's the deal with Bob Chester? With uh, um, I, I'm sorry. Could I could I just ask who joined in? Because I couldn't. Everybody was talking at the same time. Uh, Scott Johnson. Okay. Hi, Scott. Um, How are you? Pretty good. You? Good. Um, and I think we have. Uh, um, but we haven't. Well, we had someone else to join. They're gone. I'll take it back. Go ahead, Scott. I really want to work with him. I know. I've been pushing. We've been trying to post it on Facebook, get some more interest. Um, hopefully, maybe when COVID's done, we thought that actually might run because it's on the other end of a stick. You're kind I of know a, that you know, son of a gun. His karate class is doing great, or the the taekwondo. Um, was a little yeah. No, I used to teach for him. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, hopefully, all right. All right. pushing it. But go ahead, Bill. Okay. So, um, Scott, welcome. First question, and and maybe the only question I have for you is no, there are two. I'm sorry. So the first question is about operating expenses. As of the end of December, you were at four percent of budget. Um, I'm curious to know if that's been updated and if you know where you're going to come out at the end of the year. Um, uh, what are we talking about? Senior center? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are we talking over, oh, operating? Operating uh, expense for senior center. Yep. Only 4%? Yep. That's at the end of December. So information's a little old. Yeah, I'm gonna say it should be, it should be a little. You know what it is? Is because we're not we're not open, so we're not um, having yeah. a ton of stuff going on right now. Um, and then some right. of it basically being covered out of the Parks and Rec. Um, so okay. hopefully, through we will you know combine the operating budget. Um, so that's kind of a way for us to track it. We're kind of taking you know paper first out of Parks and Rec, so that we can kind of have an idea of what you know we can possibly cut in the future. Okay. Um, the next question is about the community health program. Um, we're budgeting 14,000, same as we have uh, for the last four years. And that has been traditionally, historically underspent. Um, this year we're at zero. Uh, the year before we spent 9,100. The year before 12,000. The year before 11,000. So I'm wondering, is 14,000 a little bit high for the uh, for the community health program? Um, I'm hoping we could probably knock that down. Um, so actually, what it is is it there's it's kind of an in and out uh, budget line. So it's yep. used to offset some of the costs for the senior program. Um, right now, it's we actually I think only have like $60 taken out of it because we've been trying to get some virtual senior classes going, and they're they're not really taking very well. Um, the only thing I think we've run in person is aqua size, and they take like two people at a time for a class uh, due to the COVID restrictions. Yep. Um, but we've been trying to run a little more efficient um, and, you know, not hold a program if we don't have, a, you know, the minimum number of participants. That way we're not, you know, having a class with one or two people in it um, and then paying an instructor out of that account. Um, so hopefully in the future, we're hoping that actually it could even be run essentially like the Parks and Rec special revenue account um, where it would be self-sufficient. Um, Good. One of the things Good. Hopefully in the that is would one, one of my goals would be nice. I'd, back, I'd like know. to see that. Yeah, there there is some revenue associated with this, but I know that in years past, it's nowhere near what we've spent on it. So uh, mm -hmm. anything you can do to reduce that would be much appreciated. What what would you change the fourteen thousand to? How much would you cut it? Um, I have to look and see because we were increasing before COVID. We were increasing our program load, um, trying yep. to use as much of that as possible, offer as many programs for the seniors, and you know, di diversifies our you know offerings. Um, mm -hmm. Then COVID hit, and it kind of put a halt to all the growth that we were seeing. Um, so, I mean. It, it really depends on the year and the type of programs. Uh, I'd have to, you know, play with some numbers, and then we'd also have to, you know, be really strict on, uh, you know, our the a number of participants that we would require to run a class, um, like Parks and Rec, if we're going to do a cut. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, like, are you talking to try and knock that down even further this year? Well, it, yeah. So it's fourteen thousand proposed for this coming year. It was fourteen thousand this past year. It was fourteen thousand the year before, and that year, uh, the expense was ninety-one thirty-nine. So I'd propose that we cut it to ten thousand. At, at least do what we did yeah. three years ago, two years ago. I think we can manage the ten thousand. Um, definitely, when COVID comes back, hopefully, you know, we'll have our classes going again. Um, and yeah. If we continue with the system we were doing before we closed down um, and only running a program when we have, I think we we're setting it at like four participants at least. Um, that way we're closer to breaking even. And if we do run a class below the threshold, um, we're not, you know, losing as much money as we would if we ran it with two people. Exactly. 
good plan. Um, they okay. were previously running it with like two people in hopes that they'd have walk-ins. Um, and we're trying to push yeah. the seniors to sign up ahead of time. And then actually when we come out of COVID, they're going to have to sign up, you know, prior to the class. They won't be able to do walk-ins probably for some time. Good, good, good plan. Okay, I want to uh, just acknowledge for the minutes that um, Beth uh, Rumery has rejoined us, uh, I guess, in person, and also Kent Harding has joined, Harding has joined us. Oh, I see Beth online, and, and I see Ken online, so I take that back. He's not in the room, um, but they are both on. So Ken is um, with the Senior Commission, and I believe Beth is too. So welcome. Um, I also Ken is the chair, yeah. correct? Yeah. And I also see uh, Norma Sokolsky. She's back. She's the vice chair. Bill, Roxanne is saying Beth is with the library. Oh, okay, Beth, thank you. Beth is with the library, got it. So Norma and Ken are with senior chair and vice chair. Um, those are the only questions I had for senior center and the senior commission counselors, Andra, Tom? No. I think I'm all set. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. what happened with the website? Oh, regional? Yep. Regional senior website? Yep, so it's the uh, regional, it's seniorcenterct.org. Um, so all the other senior centers in the area are on it. This year we actually paid for the setup fee. Um, so the reduction is now, it'll just be the monthly fee oh, I see. Okay. Uh, to maintain the website going forward. All right, got it. Thank you. And then we're hoping okay. that'll capture the next generation of seniors that you know are using the internet. Um, plus we're the only good. one in the area. That's good. Not, you know, not on it. That's a funny way to... It just struck me funny. Capture the next generation of seniors. That actually did. Get them while they're young. <laughs> <laughs> Look in the mirror. Okay. Oh, don't so even. Let's, it's a mild yeah. number. Let's, let's move to Parks and Rec uh, while we have Scott. Three. All right. And, uh, really? So first for question I have is. <laughs> go ahead, Scott. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, so first question for Parks and Rec was under repairs and maintenance. Um, that line item is occasionally underspent. Um, currently, we're at 4,500 out of 29. Uh, yeah, out of 20, almost 30,000 budgeted, we've spent 4,500. Uh, the year before, we spent about 1,000 less than budgeted. Um, and one year F18, we were about 5,000 less than budgeted. So my question at 29.9, do you think you'll spend that this year given it, it varies some and we, we didn't spend it this year, it looks like. So thoughts on that? Um, for repairs and maintenance. So typically actually, I think we usually transfer money into that line because we run we're running low on certain things at the end of the year. And if we have a little bit left in operating, we'll move some money over into repairs and maintenance. Um, I think like the past few years, it's been like 2000, maybe we transferred over and then a couple hundred last year. Um, just to uh, add, I, I think what they're not seeing is the encumbered dollar amount. They are almost 100%, it's 99.9, yeah. including encumbrance. I was gonna say we have like six so, okay. left. My guess is that there's monthly payments involved with this that you're that are encumbered they're at 99.49 percent if you include encumbrances okay thank you ian you're welcome that's helpful um and then operating expenses those usually run really close to each other uh, budgeted and spent um we budgeted in f21 23820 and we're up almost 4% in this year's budget. And I was curious for the reason for that. All right, yeah, so the reason we had to increase this year is actually the, the cost of our drug test for the summer camp counselors doubled. Uh, they went from $30 oh. a test to $60 a test. Um, so that's the uh, $900 increase that you're seeing. Okay. And last year, it might've been a little, you know, we probably underspent due to the fact we didn't have summer camp um, some of the sure. expenses have. Yeah. Sure. Um, but 
Well, that share stuff. That that'll go to the to the budget surplus, hoping we have one. So, okay, that's the only question I had for Parks and Rec. Um, other than if you had to cut something, what what would you cut? Um, we're we're pretty lean at the moment. I mean, we cut the three thousand four hundred out of. Oh, uh, wait, no, wrong line. What do we take uh, out of electric? Um, we minus, yeah, 3,500. Right. I know the commission's yeah. even a little worried about that. Um, okay. When the lights turned back on, because the past couple of years we had Triple E, and then with COVID, uh, those field lights weren't being used um, like they would yep. normally be. Turn those mm -hmm. lights on, the bill goes from, you know, maybe $100 to $1,500 very quickly. Um, they could have just a few games out on the lights, and those those bills are are scary when we get them. Okay, and and that's the only. Um, I, I'm sorry, that was a decrease. Uh, the only increase that you had was uh, what we just talked about, other than in the um, repairs and maintenance. I, I'm sorry, in the drug test cost, other than wages and salaries. So I really don't see anything else we can we can uh, work on. Yeah, and all the salary changes were the uh, merging, you know, the senior center, moving the um, yep. advisors line over. Yeah, which was the savings. So we appreciate that. Tom, Andre, questions? No. No, you got it, Bill. Okay. All right. Um, let's go look at capital. I don't know if I saw anything for senior center. I don't. Yep. Yeah, so uh, no senior center capital. Yep. There's still there's one off budget item that's going to be coming to you next week for finance. Okay. Um, for parks and rec? Uh, for the senior center, it involves the upgrade to uh, lighting in the theater room. We won't we won't see a time like we have now where we have nobody using it to actually get in there and get the, the lighting updated, which is still a reason oh, yeah. to the building. So we're yeah, trying yeah. to wow. that before the center reopens. Okay. Well thank you for the heads up. I I heard there was something else coming for next week, so that that's a good project. Save a little more money on electricity. Yeah. Okay, right. um, Scott, thank you very much. Okay. And, and, and Norma. Do you have any questions for capital? For, um, oh no, we're doing I didn't center have, um, Well, let's go back. Let me go back there. Um, there's always capital for parks and rec. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's in there. No, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Didn't we already talk with you about Parks and Rec Capital? Yeah, yeah, I went through it. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we did. <laughs> yeah. Get early. Yeah. So, guys said you might have follow up questions. So I don't know. I don't have any follow up questions. I, I have a follow-up question, but, but it shouldn't be in this meeting. And it, uh, it's something Scott and I have been working on with the mayor about getting some equipment off of the old food pantry building. Um, but we shouldn't tie up on that. But I just want to acknowledge we need to finish that discussion. Okay. Yeah, I actually did talk to Sean, I think, two days ago. I was talking to him about it. Um, I'll, I'll reach out to you. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. I think that's it, Scott. All right. All right. Well, that was Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thank, Thank you. you. And next up, we have huh? youth Hold social services. So um, oh, I, I think Kate I Kate right was going to go ahead. I, I missed that. Sorry. Say it again. I'm sorry. I was I was just uh, mentioning to Scott to get the specs together for the replacement uh, truck for Park and Rec so we can uh, get that uh, moving when it's time. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think 2004. Or, mm -hmm. That's up there. Andy said we should.
should seriously consider yeah, replacing it while we can actually get some money for it too. So. Well, thank you guys. Thank so, you. Yeah. I'll try and see if we can get on this going. So Kate Sikorsky has joined us, joined us online. Um, I know that she had an appointment today, so thank you, Kate, for, for making it. Hi, how are you? Sorry that I'm not there in person. My little one's daycare closed for a COVID exposure, so oh. I had to pick them up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of us are home too, so it's okay. So I did forward along um, our normal values of services for the past year or for the physical year 20, as long as, as well as some data from um, physical year 20 and the present. So I don't know if anybody has any questions or if you just want me to go through it or has everyone gone through it? Why don't we go through it? Okay, so we'll start with the data. Um, so during physical year 2020, Ledger Due Services provided counseling services to 83 individuals and families. This is definitely down from years in the past. Um, we noticed that once the school shut down for COVID in March, April of last year, a lot of our families, as many people thought, would just be out for like a month and then they'd start up services again. Um, ah. So they, they decided they weren't really into the, the telehealth thing. So they were just gonna like take a break and come back when schools went back in session, which didn't happen. Um, so I did follow up with all those families, but they would, you know, we're not really feeling it. We're not really feeling the telehealth. So we, we did kind of like drop our caseload in that beginning period of time where there was a lot of flux and questions. Um, we definitely built it back up over the summer and kept our cases strong throughout this year. We have been doing all telehealth therapy as of right now. Um, so that's why the number is a little bit lower than in years past. Um, I do anticipate that that will probably go up again, especially with schools reopening and kids coming back and teachers having more face time with students to see the needs. Um, I do anticipate our, our referrals to increase in the next few months. So, but between July 1 of 2020 and present March 8th, um, we've had a total of 1,134 case contacts. So these include individual counseling, family counseling, phone counseling, as well as collateral contacts. So that's with teachers um, or PPT meetings or 504 meetings. So even though our case numbers have been low, we've had a higher rate of attendance because telehealth is pretty easy to, to uh, get on to when you're home. You don't have to worry about transportation. You're right there. Um, LAS is supported financially, obviously, by the town budget, um, as well as $26,000 yearly in the Department of Child and Family Grant intended to support youth, youth service bureaus. Um, our JRB for, which is our juvenile review board for the physical year 2020, we had five cases. Um, again, these, that's a drop from years past. And that was again, due to COVID. Um, we found that I was in pretty regular contact with our chief of police in regard to our JRB cases. And he was really encouraging his officers to do a lot of community policing and um, trying to like solve problems within the family instead of like referring them out. So he was, mm -hmm positive about the fact that his police officers were able to to kind of like triage situations before having to make the referral to us during COVID. Um, this past year, we've had two referrals for truancy. Again, that's super low. And that's not because there aren't kids that are very habitually truant this year, because that is a problem at the middle and the high school with the cohort C kids, which are the kids that are physically not in school at all. Um, I think the problem there is that in the beginning of this pandemic, schools didn't really know how to process that, like kids not showing up for classes, it was a pandemic, they gave everybody a lot of wiggle room. Um, the start of this year, they were trying to kind of hash out what it was going to look like, um, and I'm not sure, you know, they ever came to like a clear, like, what are we going to do with these truant kids? Um, so we did get two referrals, unfortunately, the families didn't follow through with those referrals. 
Um, so they were sent back to the school and probably referred to DCF. But the truancy, truancy piece is still there. Um, I'm still in contact with the high school regularly in regard to truancy. And hopefully once things settle down in September, we can reestablish our work at the middle school to, to get on board with their truancy plan. Um, that was something we started the conversation a couple of years ago and then COVID and that conversation just didn't happen after that. Um, so services provided and the value of services. Um, so our interns over the past year have averaged a total value of $30,000. Um, that's a little bit lower than in years past just because our URI interns, so our University of Rhode Island interns get hours from their clinic at URI. So they end up getting about 400 hours at youth services, not necessarily 500, just because they're getting hours clinically through their program. Um, our other interns like St. Joe's University Marriage and Family Therapy interns or our social work intern did not have that experience. So they still had to achieve 500 hours at youth services. So, but I averaged kind of on the low end. Um, so it's $10,000 per intern is the value of their services per year. Um, my supervision value for each intern, so I provide an individual hour of supervision for every intern that we have every week of the year. Um, so my supervision value is $15,000. I also have a caseload, so my counseling value is $54,000 for the caseload that I carry. And the total value of services for fiscal year 2020 was $99,000. Um, the total town budget for youth services um, is, that is not correct. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I put $77,000. I don't think that's right. Um, yeah, I don't know where I got that number. Yeah, I see a total of 101. Okay, thank you. Cause I was like, that's not right. I just looked at it, I was like, that's like <laughs> yeah. my salary. That's not correct. <laughs> So we'll go with 101. So the value of you, so the town budget is 101. So the grant total for DCF is uh, tw just over $26,000. Um, so that, let me do my math. Minus 26, one, six, seven. So then the amount funded by the town is $74,833 roughly. Okay. Uh, okay. So, and our, the value of services is $99,000. So that's and, where we are. And thank you for that. Where does the $3,000 for the interns show up in the budget? So $3,000 for the interns is under the counselor line. So the 51700 object line, $5,349. Okay. What's the number again, Kate? Uh, the object line is 51700, and it's called counselor, I think. Oh, okay. Now it's called administrative wages, if I'm looking at the right place. Um, it might be. It's called counselor. I'm, Bill, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? On ClearGov, it's the counselor line. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And I'm looking at our spreadsheet. Okay. Let me maximize that. So that object under every single other department is administrative wages. Under this department, it's called counselor. Got it, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, on the rentals line, um, given recent developments, uh, I want to ask the mayor if, if we can change that number or, or what we plan to do with it, given the uh, planned use of the Morgan barn. Yeah, we, we can actually probably zero that out now, Bill. Okay. Um, because we're looking at the Morgan barn as a permanent home and that is full speed ahead. So yeah, I think that the, the rentals line goes away completely. Okay, thank wow. you. Wow. May 1st open. Yeah, that. 
Oh, yeah. So, Tom, you missed you must have been working. No. <laughs> I think you missed the information last night. They, they it fell through with um, Monday the over at the Monday morning at 7 a.m. So, this is really a question for Kate, it's more a question for the mayor then. So if we take that r rental line item out, but there's got to be operating expenses for running the food pantry that would show up yes, elsewhere. very true. So. Yeah, so we might, that, that $8,000 line item, we might want to, uh, you know, we're going down. to have electric costs for sure. Mm -hmm. So we probably want to take the 8,000 and maybe dedicate 3,500 to operating expenses and uh, take the other 45 and, and uh, save that. So does it stay under social services here? Like, do we rename the line item? Or do we just call it food pantry and adjust the amount? Yeah, we could, we could call it food pantry expenses instead of rentals. Just make that uh, 54400 line food pantry expenses. And that would allow us to cover the electric bill that's associated with that. Um, presently, there is no water to the building. I don't know if there will be. Uh, but yes, yeah, electricity definitely for sure over there. I'd like to take this opportunity to also say that the residents and business owners of this town are very generous about donating to the food pantry. Oh. I constantly <laughs> see money coming over my desk as treasurer on a weekly basis. and. Very generous donations as well. Good. It's it's absolutely amazing. A lot, a yeah. lot of donations come through for the food pantry. Thank you, Ian. Okay. Mayor, I have uh, changed changed this line item to food pantry expense and reduce it to thirty five hundred for operating that, expense. Yeah, I think that's okay. fair. I'm understanding that it's uh, you know, we don't have any history with it to really know what that number is going to look like, but this year we will. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't have any other questions, counselors. Do you? No. No. Okay. No. Kate, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Okay. You too. And I believe next up is library. So let me know if and when the director is in the room. Yeah, here, Bill. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, just for the minutes, I'm going to reflect that um, Gail Bradbury is here. Mm -hmm. Would you like me? Mm -hmm. How about right up there? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey, Gail. Hey, Gail. <laughs> When you're ready, I'll start. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. We're ready. Okay. Uh, I did send out a copy to my um, talking points, and I'll go over that now. And if you have any questions, I'll answer those. I'd like to focus on the library request on the part time wages for library assistance. <laughs> In the fiscal year 2022 budget, there are two issues. Can you hear me through there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like I'm muffled. I'm good. I'm, I'm personally comfortable if she needs to take the mask. Yeah. I, I don't mind at all. Okay. I'm, had, not, I'm not bothered at all. Yeah. I've had both shots, so. Okay. I think good. Good. Yes, go right God. Ahead. Thank you. Okay. So have I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went ahead and got them both? Yeah. Ooh. All right. I didn't want to, but my wife kind of forced me. <laughs> this is a lot easier. Thank you. Um, the minimum wage increase and serving the community on the Sunday hours are the two issues I want to focus on. Library assistants are part-time employees that are critical 
to the operations library. They work minimal hours and receive no benefit. The increase to the minimum wage impacts this account and will continue to do so for the next couple of years. A library assistant should not be considered a minimum wage job. This position requires the ability to learn numerous complex details about the circulation system, knowing the differences between multiple screens and what they are used for. Assistance or and the ability to handle multiple tasks simultaneously. Library assistants must exercise diplomacy in dealing with a diverse clientele and recognize the need for confidentiality. They are also required to have a working knowledge of different software programs and be able to troubleshoot equipment. We've been working with a reduced number of part-time hours for the past three years, and the current proposal will force us to reduce the hours even more. Sunday hours are important to the community, and as we begin to get the pandemic under control, opening on Sundays during the school year will become even more important. Sunday hours come exclusively from this account, and with the proposal as it stands now, we will not be able to open Sundays next year. And I've included a chart um, showing a couple of different options. Uh, let's see. It shows the hours currently worked by library assistants at this year's rate with two options. Option one provides a $1 increase across the steps, and option two provides a $2 increase across the steps. At the current rate, four employees will fall below the minimum wage, and the proposal for next year does not provide for Sunday hours. With option one, an additional $5,827 will allow all staff to meet the minimum wage and provide Sunday hours. With option two, an additional $9,531 meets the minimum wage requirement for the next two years and provides for Sunday hours. The Library Commission and I respectfully ask that the part-time funds be increased to cover both the minimum wage and the Sunday hours. And the chart below illustrates um, those numbers and the totals. And I also want to mention that, that the um, total hours for the part-time library assistants are the full-time equivalent of 1.8 staff people with no benefits. So, Gail, what, what is the minimum wage right now? Okay, so on the last page, on page three, right now, the yeah. uh, minimum wage is $12 an hour. And in August of 21, it's going up to $13. In July, oh, I see. 20... okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I apologize. I I didn't realize it was the third page. I never read it. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. I've included the uh, copy of the step chart so you can see how it's um, increased over the years. And for a few years, no increases were made, and so we're kind of in a situation now where we're behind on this increase. Okay. I forget that you're, you're here <laughs> without yeah. seeing you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we will take this under advisement. Um, I don't have an answer for you right now because I didn't read page three. So my apologies. Okay. Gail, your presentation was 
really impressive. And uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Any any other questions about the budget? I mean, everything else is the same in the budget. I, I just really think you thought this through and did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as you know, Gail, we we often go through and look and see what what's spent historically, what's projected to be spent, and come up with questions from there. Um, I don't have any yet, um, and I want to ask Tom and Andre if they had any questions. No. No, the historic spending is all within one or two percent of you know so yeah. down the line. Exactly. Yep. I, okay. I do. Um, I, yeah. I do keep close eye on this account because um, this is where we have to take staff to fill in when the full-time people take vacation or they're out sick. We use a part-time employees, so mm -hmm. we tend we tend to use up this account rather quickly, and I do have to watch that. Okay. Understood. What are the hours of the operation uh, today? On Thursday, we are. Uh, no, we are I mean uh, now for all days. For all days, I believe it's. You mean total? <laughs> no, 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 no. Really? What are the hours of operation? In other words, Monday you're open from when to okay. when? Tuesday, okay. et cetera. Okay, Monday, Monday to Wednesday, Bill is open nine to eight. Um, Thursday, we've been open 9 to 1 this year because we haven't been open on Sunday. Um, Friday, we're open 9 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 5. Gale's Ferry Library is 9 to 8, Monday and Tuesday, 9 to 5, Wednesday and Thursday, and Saturday. They're closed on Friday. Okay. Um, what are your normal hours uh, pre-COVID? Uh, Pre-COVID, we were open Sundays from 1 to 5. I did not do okay. that this year because of yep. um, COVID, basically. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, I'm just asking so we can, we can look at your proposal. Okay, um, there's nothing in capital. I know that we replaced the uh, heating plant. How is that working? Well, they're still tweaking it. Um, the, uh, the head guy from Texas is there today and they've made some ch changes and they think they have it uh, working better for us. They, okay. they put it on, on automatic with the air constantly going through. Good. Okay. Um, and for the minutes, I note that uh, John Bolduc has joined us. Hi, John. Hello. Counselors, any other questions for the library? Uh, I'm This is a curiosity question on the books line item. Um, how have, have expenditures changed from hard books to digital? They have, and the cost of digital is, I want to say, three times higher than a print book. Really? It's much more costly for digital. Why is that? They charge libraries differently. Um, and wow. You know, ALA you would has, think it would be different? Yes. Yeah, you would think it would be cheaper. Not only that, but when you purchase a book, some of the publishers do it by license. So you allow X number of checks. So you have to pay. For and then it goes away. Um, many of our digital resources we get cooperatively through Lion. We pay a certain amount to Lion, as do all the other libraries, and we pull it all together. So they, are they essentially trying to mimic the lifespan of a hard copy book in, in the in the digital sale? 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And I think they're trying to make more money. <laughs> I, I think it's more of that than yeah. they mimic the, the life of a hardcover. Because hardcovers will last much longer than 20 or 25 I, so always, so if I hard? have a book, I will always buy it, a hardcover, just for me. Mm -hmm. And I'll pay the 50, 80, 100 bucks versus, you know, getting it for 18 bucks online. Mm -hmm. Because I just want to have. Yeah, I still like a hard copy book. Yeah. I still prefer that in my hands, too. Mm -hmm. Um and so your, but your digital books would be in this line item. Yes, yes, they're all part of that. Very interesting. And I believe, and I think, no, it's going in this chart. Um, I want to say 23% of our book budget went to digital resources this year. Wow. All right. Yeah. So overall, the budget uh, a 1.4. 1% increase, and that's all entirely due to wages and salaries, uh, which are contractual for the most part. So thank you for that, Gail. Uh, we will, as I said, take under advisement the uh, your proposal for the part-time wages. Thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, the biggest biggest issue is the uh, the minimum wage increase. Mm -hmm. We've we've been seeing that coming. Well, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for attending. Um, thank you, Gail. Okay. okay. And thank you, Beth, and thank you, John, for attending online. Oh, good luck. Thank hey, you. Have a good job ahead of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So last up is human resources. So let me know. Hi, Don. Don's here. Hi, Don. Hey. Hey, Don. How are you? Corner over here. Did you want to? No. Did you get my text or you I was on my way. I heard you guys were behind it. That's all right. She. I'm just saying. She's like a hero. Well, really? Definitely, but. Really? I do. I think she's so good. Yeah. No, she's had a stroke too. So. Mm -hmm. so I think we're ready when you are, Don. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to start, Bill. Sorry. He's. Uh, no, we, we, so we have questions. We'll we'll start with questions unless you have something to share with us. No, I, I just um, you know one of the obviously most of what I have is is I don't want to say non-negotiable, but clearly driven by you know premium contractual. Pre contractual stuff and healthcare premiums and stuff. So um, right. I'm happy to explain how we got to the numbers that are in here if you if, at, at any point. So. Yep. Yeah, so first question is, and I, I don't have the narratives open. I've, I've got too much open now. So first question is about contractual expenses and what's included there. It went up 45%. Uh, find my notes. Um, okay. So is that uh, contractual expenses or allowances includes uh, both uh, things like police longevity, all longevity, um, degree incentives, uh, uniform allowances, phone, uh, cell phone uh, allowances that we provide through contracts, uh, any of the uh, sick time payouts uh, for public works employees. We have they have in their contract if they accrue more than. Uh, please don't quote me. I think it's six. Who's they? The public works. I'm sorry. If they accrue more than 600 hours, it's either six or 700. You have to pay I apologize. Uh, we have to pay out at, on their anniversary day whatever they've accrued over that. Um, so all of that is factored in there along with um, uh, do, 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 sick time, degree incentives. I already covered that. So that's the bulk of it. Um, that's like 99% of it, yeah. So are we anticipating something that's driving that up? A, a per, I don't want to ask who, but is it a person's retirement or something like that? Well, those those uh, payouts for retirements are, 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 are done elsewhere. Those are in the retirement cash out column. 
So this is, um, I, it may be a more accurate reflection than what was budgeted last year or where we're at this year, um, just based on a little more grunt work on putting the numbers together. Okay. Does that, that answer your question? Sort of. So I, I think what I'm hearing is it's a forecast, and, and that's what the forecast is. It's going to go up. Yes. Okay. Well, it never goes down, Bill. <laughs> Well, I know, but it, I mean, that's a big jump compared to what we're seeing. So I, I thought maybe it was something happening that, that you know, one particular event. So um, payroll expenses went up 9%. I was curious about that. Uh, that was a contractual increase with Time Force that does the handles okay. our timekeeping. Yeah. Don, let me ask you this question. I know that we've had <clears throat> a little bit of an exodus in a police force. Yes. How has that affected overtime? As anything that goes on over there impacts overtime. Um, the, uh, the unexpected exodus last fall, which were the three that left one to another police department, it was he was picked hand picked out of here, really um, by somebody we all know and love. Oh, really? Really? Yes, Mr. That's son that of is... a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, on the record, <laughs> let the record show. That Tom, Tom said son of a bitch. <laughs> we gave him a lot of shit about it, but they so just so you are aware, wow. they was it Finkelstein? Yeah, Finkelstein. Yeah. So he the it. town of, the town of East Lime had to pay us thirty two thousand dollars to take him. So. Um, anyway, that was a whole whole other issue. So then we had two that left. You let that happen. <laughs> two that left um, primarily because of the Black Lives Matter stuff and all ah, that and yeah. the accountability bill, Just and they actually left the police profession completely. So did I know two two officers left yes. and just uh, didn't want to be police officers. Right. Correct. Why did he have to pay? No, they paid us. This is state. No, they paid us the salary. The state. We trained them. Right. The statute requires them to ba basically reimburse us if they leave within two years, okay. Okay. because we sent him to the academy. So sure. okay. it was a. It, there's a. It wasn't formula that had to be worked out. Pardon me. Yeah. They had to pay a lot. They had to pay us. Like, what was it? Thirty-two thousand. Thirty-two thousand change. Yeah. Thirty-two thousand. It makes no sense. Why? Yeah. Okay. Isn't that good? <laughs> Apparently, in the I don't know. I mean, yeah. Time will tell, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> bidding war for them. So, wow. I'm sorry. Back to your question. I, obviously, all of those things impact over time. You know, you're all of a sudden you're down three officers. You've got to cover the shifts or, you know, I, adjust. I it was so five. No, we lost three. Oh, we lost three in that. Sorry, we lost three that way, and then we did lose two to retire. Lost not for retirement. Okay. Correct. We're losing another one next month. So at the end of April 1st, and then um, retiring. Retiring, correct. We did pick up two more. We have two in the academy, and we hired a lateral last November from, uh, God, I'm not going to remember where he came Norwich. from. Norwich. Norwich, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I didn't come to the Monday meeting, so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're, hey, we're at. Tom, in we're comparison at, to years past, overtime is actually down from. From past years, it's really? better than it was. Yeah, yeah. you weren't yeah. for Monday, but yeah, the chief was. We we were looking at that, and it is down. Good. It seems to be back Good on to track. Know. I mean, he's been he's yeah. he's very conscious of it, obviously, and um, you know, so we're back up to full staff, except in the count, two of them are still in the academy mm -hmm. and won't be patrol officers till in the fall sometime. Okay, thank you. Yep. So next question is defined contribution plan is going up significantly. Is that contractual from bargaining? It's partly the bargaining plus you know every time we hire a new person now they're in that plan. So oh, right. Um, right. And we have had it significant increases mm -hmm. finally with the uh, matching amounts. Uh, police have gone up to eight percent with their contract projecting to ten percent next year. Um, so oh. th we're seeing that's a good that's yeah that's a good deal yeah. Okay. Um, and unemployment went way down. Well, yeah, it went way down, 30%. 30%. 
40, almost 40%. Well, we're hoping that with the pandemic gone, that we're the unemployment stuff will, will even out. Um, okay. And I don't, uh, there, you know, there's the whole issue because everybody who got laid off last year, obviously, including summer kids who weren't hired, who had worked the year before, are collecting unemployment. Um, yeah. Just ridiculous amounts of money going to people who, you know, were part-time workers or whatever. So. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I had. I'll turn it over to the counselors. <laughs> uh, so, had nothing. You um. What, what do you want to give back? Go ahead, Andre. I, I had a, I think back to um. Wait, let me open up the narrative because there was um. I think it was under contractual. Oh, I know. I, it's a question really about the sick payout, and maybe it's not for this meeting. But I always wonder about. Um, accruing vacation and sick time and then having to pay it out. I always wonder about, you know, I I, I would rather see people use their vacation time. Correct. I get that. So, you know, even sick time at some point, like, do you just not accrue anymore? So the, that's all driven by contract, mm -hmm. by various contracts. So it's different for each of the unions. The Except, let me address the vacation thing. That accrual, they are only allowed to carry over one year. Uh, from okay. one year to the next, so they have to use it okay. or they lose it. Okay, that's right. Um, so if somebody leaves and they've got three weeks sitting there that they haven't used, we have to pay that out, obviously. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's not an open-ended thing. Like <coughs> right, they like can. they accrue 50 weeks and right. they retire a year early. Right. To pay. Okay. And they, but they, didn't, they cannot accrue that much. Right. The okay. maximum anybody could accrue is four weeks. Okay, great. Um, so that there's that issue. The other, uh, with the sick time, again, that's driven by contracts. Uh, some of the contracts have caps on what they can accrue overall. Some of them we've had to grandfather in the old older uh, people who are still here, so they can accrue whatever they want, but they can only cash out X percentage of that when they leave. Um, so you know we've tried over the last since I came in ten years ago to to, to sort of you know reduce that liability mm -hmm. to the town. Mm -hmm. And is um, does it, is there personal time or is that does it, is it like sick personal or is it personal vacation? It's there's vacation, there's sick. There's personal and there's floating holidays. Those are the <laughs> four that they that they get in varying various degrees. If you leave, you don't get paid out for vacation. I'm sorry for the per, uh, personal or the floating holidays. Those, those if you leave and you haven't used them, that's okay. your lot. Um, and then we're we're driven by whatever the contract says as far as the sick pay. Okay. Right All right. All right. That's the thing. But work you very hard to negotiate some of those things down though. Ten fourteen days. Pardon me. The, the sick is usually 10 weeks. The sick and the vacation actually mirror each other, so you, the maximum you can accrue is four weeks of sick and four weeks of vacation. Okay. Per year. Per year. Right. So we had, I mean, one of the firefighters left um, with, I don't know, he had like 1,600 hours of sick time, but really? the restrictions in the contract, we only had to pay him out 800 or something like that. So he, but he's an old, the newer guys who've been hired since 2015. Uh, now can only accrue up to 600 hours, and they get 50% of that when they leave, if they leave. Or they use it. Right, they can use it, right? But mm -hmm. if, they, if they say, I'm, I'm, I'm retiring, I'm not, they have to be, you have to be here 10 years also in order to qualify to get paid out. Just say oh, I'm okay. punching. Yeah, this right. makes me feel better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> sorry. We've, I mean, there's a lot of restrictions, but some yeah. one, no, like yeah. the one we hit last year with um, Keith um, Harrison, you know, he was one of the old timers who never used sick time, and he had it was a huge payout for him. But we've we've caught back on that significantly in the new. Okay, country. good. <clears throat> when I came. Yeah, I think he was here when they founded the town. <laughs> <laughs> he attends my wife's church. <laughs> so, yeah. and and um, at that point in time, what he actually did just. Uh, so besides the point, is that he used that to pay for health insurance for a year. Sure. He stayed on our policy for a year, and so it was, it was a yeah. way to fork it over to him. Yeah. Good for him. He was too young for Medicare. Yes. Yeah. Even though he'd been here since the beginning of that. <laughs> like you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was my only question, Bill. Thank you, Andrew. Tom? 
No. Good. Okay. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Thank you. Don, you're a professional as always. I appreciate that. No, I mean it. All right. So, counselors, as, uh, as Roxanne indicated, we will pick up at the Finance Committee meeting Wednesday night, and uh, I'll come with this spreadsheet that we've been using. I've been keeping notes on the questions that we had, so uh, we should be able to come back and at least find a few lines that we can change for the better. Um, and I want to thank Marsha for the good news she sent us earlier today regarding the health care uh, payments. So the budget is looking better and uh, better as we go. And Thank I you, sir. All righty. Anyone, last comment? If not, I will close this meeting at 3.12 p.m. And Roxanne, I'll get you the names of all the attendees. Okay. I think I all got right. most we of are... <laughs> you. Did you? Okay. Um, I'll yeah. just I'll Thank talk you, to you on the phone. We'll go over it verbally. So, yep. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Good work. Thank you. Uh, thank you.